Imagine that you're walking around a room, but you have to change direction with every step. It would look very strange. You would just move around randomly. Sometimes you might bump into someone else or a wall, and eventually you might make it to a door. This sounds like a terrible way to get around, but it's very similar to how many signals move inside our bodies. I'm talking about molecule diffusion. In this video, I'm going to introduce the physical phenomenon of diffusion and what it means at microscale. By microscale, we're talking from about tens of nanometers up to about hundreds of micrometers. One millimeter is 1,000 micrometers, or one million nanometers. This range is very important for signaling by living cells, since most cells are between 1 and 100 micrometers in length. Diffusion is fast enough over this range for rapid communication inside cells and between nearby cells. To communicate over much larger distances, like over the whole body, Cells also use other types of transport, like fluid flow and blood vessels. You can find a link in the video description to a previous video where we list examples of molecular communication in the body, and we'll talk more about fluid flow in a future video. For now, back to diffusion. Consider a glass of water with something dissolved in it, like salt. Once it's dissolved, we can't distinguish the individual salt crystals. The salt particles have been separated from each other at nanoscale, and they're surrounded by water molecules. When the water molecules are in liquid or gas form, then they are all moving. From the perspective of a salt particle, it's like being in a very big ball pit where the balls are all shooting around. Now, can we describe the movement of a single salt particle? Its motion will be controlled by the water molecules. Each collision from a water molecule is a tiny knock that pushes the particle in some direction. In our water glass, we would have a very large number of knocks on the salt particle in a very short period of time. The motion of the particle as a result of these collisions with water, or more generally collisions with any fluid, is called molecule diffusion. Fortunately, we don't need to know the details of all the collisions in order to describe a salt particle's overall movement. Because there are so many water molecules, we can use a statistical result known as the central limit theorem, which lets us replace information about the individual water molecules hitting the salt particle with a single parameter known as the diffusion coefficient, usually written as a capital D. If we have the diffusion coefficient for salt and water, then we can say how far a salt particle is likely to travel over some time period. The units for a diffusion coefficient are distance squared over time, like meters squared per second. This is unlike the units for speed in meters per second. Having distance squared reflects how diffusing molecules spread out while they move. As a parameter, the diffusion coefficient has really interesting scalability. We use it at a single particle level to generate motion in simulations. We also use it in formulas for describing overall motion on a much larger scale. For example, how the salt concentration in an area varies over both time and space. We'll be covering both diffusion simulations and formulas in upcoming videos. Thanks for watching this video. You're welcome to like it and leave feedback in the comments. Consider subscribing if you want to see more content on biophysical communication engineering. See you next time.